KM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Hello, everyone, and welcome to HCAM News Live. I'm HCAM News Director Tom Nappy to fill you in with what's happening in Hopkinton. HCAM News Live airs every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. On today's edition of HCAM News, we talk with the captains and coach of this year's Hiller Girls Volleyball Team, we have highlights from week two of the fall to Hiller sports season and Weston Nurseries owner Peter Mezit talks about how business is going and we'll fill you in with some happenings in town you should know about. But first, the select board received results from the National Research Center about the town's performance. Here's a look. At the select board meeting, the select board heard the results of a community satisfaction survey, which was hosted by the National Research Center. Damima Mann presented the results. That um, we have amassed a very large benchmarking comparison database. Um, there's about 600 communities across the U.S. Um, that have uh, conducted the NCS and uh, we've been able to create an average rating for each item on the survey. So in addition to uh, giving you your ratings and comparing Hopkinton's ratings from 2013 to 2020, we're also able to tell you how your ratings compare to those national averages because um, some services are always going to be more highly regarded than others in, in these kinds of surveys and it's a great way to help put the results into context. Next slide please. So here's a, uh, a snapshot of how Hopkinton compared or stacked up to that national benchmarking database um, for each item on the survey. Um, 86 of the question items were similar to the benchmark, 38 were higher, 14 received lower ratings. We have intentionally made it difficult to be anything other than similar to the benchmark. Um, and then this is to help make the data as actionable as possible. So areas where you're higher than the benchmark should truly be considered areas where you're excelling and areas where you're lower um, could be potential areas to, um, to, to direct more resources, um, depending on what they are and how they compare to town priorities. Um, areas where Hopkinton, this, so this is unusual. We expect to see most ratings be similar to the benchmark um, and they were for Hopkinton. However, the number of ratings that were higher than the benchmark are, are definitely a, a standout to us. Um, Hopkinton excelled in many areas. Uh, a lot of them had to do with quality of life, um, education, the town is a place to live, neighborhoods is a place to live, town is a place to raise children, uh, parks and recreation, and many, many of the ratings that were higher than the national averages had to do with safety, overall feelings of safety, uh, police services, crime prevention, emergency preparedness. Uh, so those were some standouts there. And then as for those that were lower than the benchmark, I'm going to get into a little bit more detail on them on some upcoming slides. Um, next slide, please. Here's a quick snapshot of how the ratings in 2020 that were able to be compared to those from 2013 um, uh, stacked up. You can see overall um, of the ratings that we were able to compare uh, between the two surveys, most of them remained stable over time. 44 items were stable, 23 were trending up, which is also notable, and um, 12 were lower in 2020 than in 2013. Next slide, please. The ratings for the overall economic health of Hopkinton um, were very strong, about uh, almost all rating it is excellent or good, 87%. Uh, this rating was higher than the national benchmark. Next slide, please. There were um, some noted changes between the 2013 survey and the 2020 survey. Uh, ratings for economic development, the overall quality of businesses and service establishments, and those not experiencing housing cost stress increased in 2020 compared to 2013. Um, whereas ratings for shopping opportunities, employment opportunities, and those that had a positive um, economic impact uh, 
were, were declining. Um, and those that are declining are very similar to what we've seen uh, for many communities that collected data in 2020 and you know during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so those are, are very much uh, likely to be related uh, to that. I Next have slide. a question. Um, when we're comparing the national average, are we comparing uh, Hopkinton as compared to all other towns of similar sizes or just all other towns? So for the, that's a great question. For the national benchmark, it is compared to all of the communities in our database. So uh, much larger cities and counties and, and from all regions across the US, it's about um, over 600 communities. And so that's what I focused on in the presentation. But in the technical appendices report, um, there is a custom subset of benchmark comparisons. And we worked with town staff to determine what, what that would be. And that's so that's a much smaller subset of communities. Um, it's communities, other communities in New England, um, and also some that have similar population ranges and um, annual household income levels. OK, thanks. But it, it seems like if we're comparing Hopkinton to you know someplace in Nebraska or Montana where there's far fewer people, it's not really an apples to apples comparison, you know. It's true. You're never going to find your, you know, exact twin. Um, however, you know, all local governments are in the same business of providing services to their residents, um, and so we do see some, you know, kind of national patterns. Um, I will say that, you know, th those jurisdictions in the national database even uh, tend to be more high performing data driven organizations because they're doing surveys like this in the first place. Um, so you're being compared to a pretty, um, you know, high, high level of community. Um, and then with that subset, um, the custom benchmark comparisons that we also have in the reporting for you, uh, I'd say it's an even more challenging subset. Um, however, Hopkinton still performed very well um, with those communities. Weston Nursery's owner, Peter Mezit was recently featured on our Hopkinton Hangout Hour program to talk about how business is going. Here's a look. It was, um, you know, a year ago, it would have been March, and uh, we, we were sensing that it could be busy because the phones were ringing off the hook with people, you know, owning up to the fact they were going to have to stay home for a while. And... Um, you know, if you remember, everybody was really scared. No one knew if you could get this thing just from walking around somebody else breathing or touching something somebody else touched. So um, what happened with us is our industry wasn't given clear guidance. So the lawn and garden industry had um, uh, always fallen in the definition of agriculture and agriculture was exempt and, and was an essential service uh, sure. because of the food aspect. And it took about a month to get that language cleared up. I worked personally on that with the state legislatures so that horticulture was included in the definition of agriculture and we were essential. But in that month period, we, um, we kind of, you know, we were very conservative. We didn't open our stores. In fact, in Hopkinton, we didn't open our store until almost July for people to come inside. But right, we even, felt- Even though some retails did open up, you right. to stick with your model because of, of safety reasons. Yeah, yeah, and the employees didn't know and they were scared, so we wanted to do it for them as well. Um, and then the outside part was even a little sketchy, so we kept people in their cars all the way up until Mother's Day week, which is our busiest week of the yeah. year. Oh, sure. We had people driving and we set up our garden center where we had a, a long tent and all the products that you know should have been of interest, some things that were in flower for plants, People would point and we'd just put them on a cart. They'd go to the register, the outdoor register, and they'd read their credit card number. They'd hit their trunk, boop, and we'd throw it in. They never got out of their car. So we did that. We could handle about 300 plus drive through trips a day, but, you know, we get up to six and 700 trips a day in May. And we had to open up and let the customers out of their cars and into our outdoor environment in May. And we finally did that. I decided to have a flower garden, whatever. Hey, I want a new hobby. I want to try something different. And now you get all these new people in because, hey, they got the time to do it now. There were uh, 16 or 19, depending on the report you read, million new gardeners last year in this country. <laughs> <laughs> so, and these people, you know, they wanted something to do and they wanted to grow their own food because they didn't want to trust where the food was coming from all of a sudden. It was all sorts of fear. Um, so there's a lot of reasons people got in it. And I think, you know, we're going to go through this again this year. 
think it'll free up and people will start to travel again. And then maybe nobody wants to be in their gardens at that point. It's time to get out. But for the, for the time being, we're seeing a real early surge here again this year of the phone starting to ring earlier and people asking for things. Again, doing your, uh, uh, the, the wholesale yard, right? You got that running and that's up to speed. All the contractors seem to be back to work doing stuff. Yeah. So that was, that was really sketchy a year ago. Um, corporations didn't have people coming into their office parks. So the landscapers didn't have the normal, you know, plant, 10,000 annuals at the, at the entrance and, and, you know, they, you know, didn't pay as much attention to the, the regular routine stuff they'd always do, whether it was lawn mowing or whatever, because the tenants weren't in the building. So the landscaping business was off to a real slow start last year. And a lot of landscapers said, we're not even going to start up. And they didn't until mid-May maybe. Um, but that's not the case this year. People are used to this now. Um, homeowners are okay with having landscapers outside of their houses where they weren't a year ago. So yeah, the landscape quote work that we're doing right now for landscape jobs seems to be pretty heavy right now. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Welcome back to HCAM News Live. Well, week two of the fall two high school sports season took place and Hiller swimming and girls volleyball were in action. Here's a look at what happened. Hopkinton Hiller's swimming hit the pool of Milford High School to determine their results versus Holliston Medway Co-op. Each team is swimming separately this year. Results for this contest should be determined by Friday, March 18th. Here's a look at how it went. Great job by Lydia. Five bingo, so that's three fives for, for Olivia. Seven, six and a half. Let's just have two judges tonight. Deirdre and Natalie are battling it out. At the moment, Deirdre is a little bit ahead of Natalie. So let's see how they all do on the turns. The turns can make all the difference. You can really pick up a lot of, um, that wasn't the, the best turn for Deirdre, but uh, she definitely pulled a little bit ahead of Natalie, which is good. She actually could catch Kevin Connor. Won the race, yeah. Kevin won the race by, by a lot. He looked great. She could catch Connor if she could just, uh, almost. Okay. All right. Very nice. Nice. It was a and, good race. And uh, Natalie yeah. is finishing up here. She looks great. She finished strong, Natalie, too. Absolutely. I think they all, I think that's personally, I feel it's one of those challenging uh, events. Yeah. events. So. Hopkinton Hillers JV Volleyball defeated Holliston in three straight sets and took their first home contest with a sweep. Following the JV game, Hiller Varsity Volleyball took on Holliston and started off with a nice first set. Steve Sweetapple had the call. Just long. Nice eye. That's it. So the Hillers take the first set 25 to 17. 
Uh, Lorette with the serve. Yeah, let's re-digress. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh, nice play. Portal, but, oh, great play. Gilday, nice. Great play from Mel. After a back and forth second set, it ended well for the Hillers as they took the second set, 25 to 19. In the third set, the Hillers took control. Seven zero, Hillers up. Sam. Catherine back set down the right down the middle. There you go. Match point for the Hillers. Okay, Powers. <laughs> there we there go. Nice emphatic ending from Kate. Hopkinton took the third set 25 to 18 and the match via a sweep. Our program, HCAM Sports Talk, is live every Wednesday at 3 p.m. On this past week's edition, we talked with the Hopkinton Hillers girls volleyball captains and the head coach, Margie Grabmeyer. Here's a look. Hello, everyone. Tom Nappy here with Caden Boyce and Cassie White, the captains of this year's Hopkinton Hillers girls volleyball team. Kaden and Cassie, how are you? Good. How are you? Excellent. Well, you uh, just completed the first week of regular season games. Two very impressive wins against Holliston. How's everything going so far? How are the practices and how are the games? Kaden, we'll start with you. It's going really good. It's good to see our team working really well together. We're all upperclassmen, so we're really close. And um, starting our season out with two wins is really impressive. So I'm proud of our team. That's terrific. Cassie, how's everything on your end? Kind of same as Caden said. I feel like we have a lot of experience. There's just a lot of leadership. Like everyone works together already. So it's looking good. All right, so uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Uh, how long you've been playing volleyball? Do you play any other sports? And uh, do you plan on playing anything in college? Uh, we're all curious about that. Caden, we'll start with you. Um, so I've been playing volleyball for a while. Um, three or four of my sisters played for Margie when they were in high school, so I've always grown up watching their games. But I officially started in sixth grade at um, Coach Grabmeyer's Saturday Clinics. And so, yeah. Terrific. Cassie, how about yourself? Uh, do you uh, just play volleyball? How long have you been playing? And do you play any other sports? I started a little later. I started playing just in the backyard with like my neighbor right before eighth grade tryout. So that's when I started. I made that team. And then I played club freshman and sophomore year. That's where I like really got into it. And then I also am on the swim team. I'm doing that right now along with volleyball. So it's been a bit busy, but um, I've done that all four years as well as volleyball. Terrific. Uh, so what are your thoughts on this year's team? How's the camaraderie? And uh, I know there's a lot of new faces on this year's team from last year. And obviously you're playing in very different months from where the season typically is. How's everything going? And uh, what do you think about this year's team? Uh, Cassie, we'll start with you this time. I feel like it's going good. Like we like said, it's all upperclassmen. There's a bunch of juniors and then there's the seniors, which we're all already comfortable with each other. Um, and I just think even though things have been a little different, different time of year, there's no fans, can't high five, things like that. Like it's not, I don't think it's affecting us as much as, I don't know. We're not, we're just not letting it like really get in the way of our play. And I feel like we're doing a good job at still being close together and communicating. So it's going good. Terrific. Uh, Kaden, what are your thoughts on this year's team? How's everything going? It's going good. I totally agree with Cassie. Um, we have great new additions, a middle and a right side and some back row defensive players and they're looking really strong. So um, I'm super excited to continue working with them. 
I'm curious. We had this COVID-19 lockdown. Everybody was stuck in their homes. What are some of the things that you did during this uh, COVID-19 lockdown when everybody had all this extra time? Cassie, we'll start with you for this one. My main thing was I started to run because before (laughs) quarantine, I was just, I couldn't run like over a mile. But um, with all the extra time, I just started to run outside and on the treadmill. That was like the main thing. And then just hanging out, chilling out. There you go. Well, I'm sure uh, Coach Grabmeyer will be happy to hear that you uh, worked on your uh, cardio there and got ready for the season. Uh, Kaden, how about you? What are some of the things that you did during the uh, COVID-19 lockdown? Similar things. I spent a lot of time with my family. Um, My sisters were with us for a good few months and my dad bought a net so I could do some outdoor lessons. So I've been doing that in the summer and Um, stuff like that socially distance with my club coach so that has been a great help to me for preparing for the season well that's terrific and we are excited about this year's team excited that you're 2-0 to start off the season uh Caden Boyce Cassie White the captains of this year's Hiller girls volleyball team ladies thanks so much for joining us and uh we're going to turn to coach Grabmeyer next you can stick around if you want and uh listen to that interview or you could take off but thanks so much girls thank you thank you so much all right so we got coach Grabmeyer joining us right now coach how are you how's everything going it's good but I'm so happy to be able to see these girls faces because we, they've been masked the whole time I've seen them the last, you know, since volleyball started. So I almost forgot what they looked like. It's good <laughs> to see them. Absolutely. And, you, you know, in my preference, I like doing interviews on Zoom right now because I, I prefer to interview somebody without the mask. I just think it's better to, you know, number one, hear what they're saying because it's tough talking sure. through those things. But of course, uh, you want to see the faces as well. Uh, so coach, speaking of the masks, how is everything going with the masks as far as practices? I know it's an adjustment, uh, and obviously you got to wear a mask during the practice and during the games. How's that adjustment been for you? I find it's really hot wearing the mask. I I think I give credit to the athletes because they're, I thought it was going to be a lot harder for them to do than they seem to be making it just like another part of the uniform. And I don't, I feel like they're, they haven't missed a step. Um, I think it might be hard. I don't like being able to not being able to see their faces so I can see reactions and be able to read people. I can't anymore. You know, I just have to assume everything's going well unless they stop and tell me. Um, but other than that, I mean, they're great at they're They haven't, like I said, they haven't missed a step. Uh, can you talk about the team this season? How's this group? How are they adjusting? You, you lost some great players from last year due to gra- graduation, but how's this group this year? We always do. It's kind of like the Patriots way, like next, next man up. That's kind of what Hopkins uh, volleyball year. is. They're, they're, I don't know. It's a strong team this year is all juniors and seniors. So I feel like they're coming into it um, with a lot of experience and just a lot of confidence. I mean, there's, they all know what they're doing. They're all perfectly capable. And I, I have a little bit of a larger roster this year than I normally would have. But at the same time, um, I'm finding out that it's a good thing we do because you never know when someone might be sick or might need to take a couple of days off. And, um, and it's nice having like that many players, as long as I can, you know, figure out a way to make it worthwhile for everyone that we're getting, you know, some playing time in there when, when I can, um, I think that I like having this roster and, and everyone is just a great attitude. So that makes me happy too. They, I feel like everyone's the, the word this year for this season is grateful. I feel like everyone's just happy to be on the court because we might not have been. Let's take a look at the upcoming games that you can expect in the very near future on our HCAM Ed channel and a YouTube page. Right now, as I speak, Hiller's Girls Volleyball versus Ashland is happening. You can catch that game on our YouTube page tonight and partly on our HCAM Ed channel. On Friday, March 19th, tomorrow, we'll have Hiller's Freshman Football 
versus Holliston live at 4 p.m. on Monday, March 22nd. We'll have Hiller's JV football versus Holliston at 4 p.m. And also Hiller's swimming at 7 p.m. And then on Tuesday, March 23rd, Hiller's girls volleyball versus Medfield with the JV2 game at 3.30, JV1 at 4.45, and the varsity game at 6 p.m. The Knights of Columbus lent in a food for families food drive to support the Hopkinton Food Pantry maintained by Project Just Because is going on. You could catch all the details at our website, hcam.tv. A great food drive for a great cause. It is running Saturday, March 13th through Sunday, March 28th. Again, all the details available on our website, hcam.tv. And here are some other events going on at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts in the near future. You can see all the details at hopartscenter.org. Script analysis workshop for actors on March 27th. They also have an adult sketching course as well on that day. April 3rd, decorate your own walking stick. April 10th, Art Around the World. They'll study the art in Brazil. Should be a very interesting presentation. And then on April 14th, Theater Art Raise Your Voices program for 7th through 12th graders is going on. And then on April 17th, an owl painting workshop. That's an online workshop. For more information, head over to hopartcenter.org. Have your cameras ready. The Easter Bunny is coming to town. Hopkinton residents who would like the Easter Bunny to come to their house between 1 and 5 p.m. on March 27th can send their address to Jen Dwinnell and you can find all the details on our website, hcam.tv. And also the Hopkinton Women's Club will continue its annual tradition of hosting the Candidates Night. It will take place either in person or virtually on Wednesday, April 28th at 7 p.m. And the Marathon Fund Committee is awarding 10 $1,000 scholarships to graduating high school seniors who are residents of Hopkinton. Applications are now available at the Select Board Town Manager's Office in the Town Hall. The Guidance Department at the Hopkinton High School also has the applications. And you can find more details at the town's website, hopkintonma.gov, or by calling the Select Board Town Manager's Office at 508 508- 497-9701. And the Massachusetts Breast Cancer Coalition is hosting Bike for Prevention April 19th through the 25th, a virtual event. You can find all the details at our website, hcam.tv, or you can just visit mbcc.org slash bike. And here is our picture of the week, Hiller Swimming and Diving held their virtual meets at the Milford High School pool this past Monday and went up against the Holliston Medway Co-op. This picture was taken by our cameraman for that event, Mike Terosian. And upcoming town government meetings again tonight at 7 p.m. over on HCAM Ed. You can catch the school committee meeting on HCAM TV Monday, March 22nd at 7 p.m. The Zoning Advisory Committee meeting. And on Tuesday, March 23rd at 7 p.m., the Conservation Committee meeting airing on HKTV. For more information about all the town government meetings, head over to HopkintonMA.gov. Believe it or not, we are out of time for this edition of HCAM News. But don't worry, we'll be back next Thursday at 6.30 p.m., And tonight, don't forget, right now over on HCAM Ed, starting in moments, will be the school committee meeting. But for everyone at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon.